Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you. I am coming in hot today. I'm coming in extremely hot today. I had to spend a little extra time this morning with my son Bryce in his school, and we had to do his school supplies. So I literally, literally just ran out of my car and got here. Good morning, Chastity. How are you, Chris? Here, Claudia. Facebook Live. Good morning to you. I am back from Nashville. I got in late last. Uh, <clears throat> I got in late Friday night, just in time to see my kiddos and got to spend time with them this weekend. So it was great being able to uh, spend time with them. I was not able to put out all my stuff. Good morning, D. Good morning, Lori. Lori was at the football game yesterday. Boy, the Panthers had a tough one. Well, my Jets. Well, forget about it. We've lost several in a row, so we're just gonna just omit that conversation, kind of get used to that side of things. But uh, so if this is new to you, if you're just coming on here, so wish everybody a happy good morning. I just love to see good morning. So hit us up on the chats and in Facebook world, feel free to, to chat it up there and we're going to get ourselves started over here. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Glenn. We got Scott up in good old Michigan. Is that weather up there starts to churn a little bit? Good morning, Karen. So let's get into today here. Hold on one second as I just had to make a quick adjustment to my Zoom and Facebook, but there we go. So this morning one is actually, if I could show you um, the one of the nicest gifts I received was from uh, Mornings with Mike that he'll be on here very shortly, but Mike Kastner. And he sent me this this uh, poster, and I have it above my, my desk here as a reminder, but it's from uh, Coach Bryant, Coach Bear Bryant. And I'm going to share with you this story. Uh, for those that are just joining in, I didn't do my normal introduction, so let me just get that out of the way here. My name is Brock Zevin. I'm a life coach, business coach, real estate agent, and dad. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been doing this for about five years. And for those that are new, thank you so much for being part of us this morning. And Facebook world, thank you so much for, for spending some time with us. So the, the topic today, I wasn't able to post it out there, but the topic today was adversity motivates. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about my personal life as well as I read this clip to you. And part of it is Bear Bryant had a conversation with another coach after a game. So I'm going to share with you this story. So bear with me. Years ago, when Bear Bryant was coaching the University of Alabama's football team, the Crimson Tide was only ahead by six, six points in the game. And with less than two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Bryant sent his quarterback into the game with instructions to play it safe and run out the clock. In the huddle, the quarterback said, though, hey, guys, coach says to play it safe, but that's what they're expecting. Let's just give them a surprise. And with that, he called a pass play. When the quarterback dropped back the pass, he threw the pass. The defending cornerback, who was a champion sprinter, intercepted the ball and headed towards the end zone, expecting to score a touchdown. The quarterback, who is not known to be a good runner, took off after the cornerback, ran him down from behind, tackling him on the five-yard line. The effort of the quarterback saved the game. After the clock ran out, the opposing coach came up to Coach Brian and said, Boy, I thought you said your quarterback wasn't a runner. He ran down my speedster from behind. Coach Brian said this, your man was running for six points. My man was running for his life. And it kind of made me chuckle because the importance of what was about to happen that made that guy run so fast was he knew what would happen at the sidelines if he had to go back to see his coach. If you can step away from negative circumstances facing you, you'll be able to discover there's positive benefits. Later in the, in the story, it says, it take you and, and it says this, that is for most all, that is almost always true. You simply have to be willing to look for them and not take the adversity you are experiencing too personally. Part of the story goes, and if you experience a train wreck in your career, think of the maturity and in developing inside of you. 
Bill Vaughn goes on to state this. In the game of life, it's a good idea to have a few early losses, which relieves you of the pressure of trying to maintain an undefeated season. Always measure an obstacle next to the size of your dream you're pursuing and all in it's all in how you look at it. When I read this and I heard this story, immediately what came to my mind was in 2019 when I lost my real estate license for an entire year. I was completely turned upside down. At the same token, my wife and I were getting separated. I had foreclosure notices and the real estate commission said, Hey bud, um, you get to pick which year, but you got to, you got to forego your real estate license. And so basically in my world, that means I, I didn't have a job. Right. And on December 10th, 2019, I lost my license. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything else to fall back to. I had, um, at the time period of my license, I had nine people on my team. I had three W-2 employees. I had a child. I was living in a country club mentality lifestyle. I had a $500,000 home. We were living it up. And my life crashed. And so I say that because sometimes it gets me all choked up because that pain, that adversity was preparing me for my future of situations at the time period. I had no idea, but that adversity motivated me because the time period I walked into my office was the, when I had to talk to my broker in charge team leader. And they said to me, what are you going to do now? You don't have a job. You don't have a license. And I shook my head at him and nodded at him. I said, thank you very much. That's all I needed you to say. I'm actually having a conversation with my accountant because I'm going to use this story to inspire and hopefully help other people. That year in 2019 that I lost my license, I found a way around the situation and how I could become a consultant. And the reason why I have to ask my accountant this is because I got to share some confidential material because sometimes people don't believe what you say. So you have to prove to people what you say. I made I made $287,000 that year without having a real estate license. So when people tell me they can't do something, even when they have a real estate license, I will call BS to it. And I will tell them when adversity hits you, it also motivates you. And you got to figure out what that is. You got to listen to people who are turning you down. You got to listen to people who are throwing rocks at you. You got to listen to people who are telling you you can't do it. And you got to take that adversity. You got to turn it upside down. And you got to be able to say, this is the story God created for me that I'm going to help share with other people. So that way, they too can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so when I read this and I, and I looked at that story and I went, when, when coach Brian says that man was running for six points, my man was running for his life. I was running for my life. I had no choice because foreclosures, cars repossessed, family uh, on the line. I had people that were counting on me, W2 employees that if I didn't pay them, they don't can't pay their job or they family. You know what that feels like? So I was running for my life. And when you run for your life, guys, it's different. It's different than anything else. And so I challenge you today. Figure out what motivates you. See what challenges you got. Look at your adversity and stop playing victim. And be like, damn it, I'm going to freaking do something about this today. I'm going to buckle up my chin strap and I'm going to go play the game. I'm going to go in there. Whatever it might be. You know how many things I've heard about the shift and everything else? That thing I, I went to in Nashville for my coach and that speaking engagement to learn. Man, it, it, it's a different level when you deal with the elite of the elite. When you're around the top 10% of the, these people in the country, they think differently. They dress differently. Like, it's just, I was telling my mom yesterday about it. And I was like, mom, and I, and I say this not in a very arrogant way by any means. For those that physically work out, 
majority of the time, I mean, it's typical. I'm 44 years old and I say it many times. Like I just, I just want to continue to work out so I can play with my kids and stay in good shape. I mean, that's, that's really what my why is. And most of the time when I talk to my buddies, they're like, oh man, I can't believe you, you work out. I can't believe you do that. How do you do that? How do you maintain in shape? Da, da, da. I'm like, well, my why is bigger than my excuses and I just want to. The point I'm getting at is majority of the time, I'm the only one that's in good shape compared to all my friends and everything else. And they call them dad bods and all that stuff. But I went into this meeting with these other people, about 150 people. Let me just tell you. If you didn't work out, you'd be like the complete opposite. They'd be like, oh my gosh, like, I can't, like, everybody works out. Everybody's trained. Everybody gets up early. Everybody gets up late. I mean, stays up late, gets up early, works really hard. When you're taught, when the lead of the elite, you got to think differently. And when you're around a bunch of people that are lead of the elite, just like I say many times, there's 32 quarterbacks, but there's only top five quarterbacks that still make it. Yesterday, Tom Brady was the oldest quarterback to start in the NFL. Start, not a, not position, not a position with court, like the oldest player to start in the NFL, and he still plays at the elite level. His numbers last year at his age of 44 years old, he led the entire NFL for touchdowns and the entire NFL for passes at the one of the oldest players. That's the elite of the elite. Where do you sit? What adversity are you letting sit on the wayside? Get yourself in a position, guys, to, 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 to handle that and find a way to motivate yourselves because life's going to hit you in the mouth. Life hit me in the mouth many times. Just find ways. I said it many times this past weekend when I was in Nashville. I said, I'll figure it out. I don't know how yet, but I'll figure out a way to be able to do what I need to do. All right. I'm done. Let's get into the day. So who's got something for me? Who's got a question? Oh, no. I forget about that. It's mornings with Mike. So sorry, Mike. I completely forgot you. We got Monday mornings with Mike. He is traveling back from Rhode Island. Mike, good morning, sir. Good morning, BZ. That was a very inspirational talk. Very good. Uh, well done. Well, I appreciate it, man. And I thank you every day for that when I get to look above my desk. And, and for those that want to know what it says, it says, I'm just a simple plow, man, <clears throat> plow hand from Arkansas. But I have learned over the years how to hold the team together. You lift some men up, calm others down until finally they've got one heartbeat. Then you got yourself a team. And so uh, that is my quote that he gave me. So uh, good morning, man. Good morning to you. So, yes, I am uh, getting, getting ready to go through Hartford, Connecticut. Got about 12 hours of drive left ahead of me. And then uh, before I get back to Charlotte. Very cool. Very cool. I knew you were, you were driving back. So um, for today, I know we were talking and your daughter Taylor's in the car and she does a lot of investments. And one of the conversations that we're starting to hear more and more of is thinking outside the box and different ways to have conversations with uh, clients, different conversations to have with maybe some clients who didn't sell their house which still means they have equity in their home, which means there's different conversations. Literally, I'm having one now with one of my past clients. He's lived in his house for nine years. He's not in a position to move, but he's got a ton of equity in his property. And he was sharing with me when I said to him, hey, man, have you thought about using your equity to buy investment properties? He goes, funny you should say, my work that I do in the banking world is came out with some program for us to be able to leverage that. So that conversation just happened to hit, hit perfectly for us for what we're trying to do or my conversation piece with them. So I'm going to challenge you guys and, and Taylor, feel free to join in on this because you and I were talking about it, but using this as leverage to be able to have conversations with using people's equity in their home to do cash outs. There's different bank statement loans, but share with me a little bit about what you're hearing, Mike or Taylor on, on some of the aspects to help people on the call today, being able to use that as leverage to maybe talk to their best clients. Well, I, I guess kind of comes down to what we were saying was you've got to be thinking creatively, think out of the box. Um, the, if you stay traditional and you go through traditional and that, road dries up that avenue of revenue 
um, gets challenging. What are you doing to create other avenues uh, to help you make become successful? So um, I'm going to go ahead and tell that story I was telling you uh, real quick. So we're up here in the New England area. And one of the things that stuck out as a real estate agent is going through a lot of these houses that use uh, wood siding and cedar shake. And I never understood that because we're driving past them and saying, like, wow, they all need to get painted, restained. And because of the weather conditions up here, they probably have to do that like every two to three years. So I asked a number of locals, why do you do this? Why do you do wood siding that needs to be repainted like every two years or the cedar shake shingles that need to be restained every two to three years? And every single one of them, it blew me away, said, well, it's the way we've always done it. And mm. so I said, well, you know, they do make hardy board siding that looks exactly like it and it's concrete. So it will last 25, 30 years and you don't need to do anything to it. Why would you not consider that? And you're like, well, no, this is what we've always done. And it, it so I, I use that as an example because I bring it back into the real estate world <clears throat> of when you're saying, hey, if you're having challenges with helping people to sell their house, buy a house, the market is shifting. You got to shift and pivot with it. So you got to look at different type of creative avenues that you could use, whether it's utilizing equity in your house and saying, hey, we could, instead of maybe selling it, would you like to do something to cash out equity and buy an investment property with it? Would you like to turn this one into an investment property? One of the discussions we had again was, there's a huge uptick in uh, Airbnbs and Verbos, and how many agents out there are educated enough to understand how that works? Because maybe that's an opportunity for a buyer or seller to say, hey, would you like to look at these? Well, if it's like, ah, I've never done that before, I don't really know how to do that. What happens if you become like those people who like, ah, it's the way I've always done it. And it's so expensive to, I, I literally was watching while we're sitting out at a cafe, this guy was sanding off the, the, the siding and they're getting ready to repaint it and all this. And I'm like, this is going to take him hours and hours to do, to do this again in probably three or four years. So it's time to maybe work smarter instead of working harder. Look at, different types of ways that you can go about think outside of the box and how do you put yourself in a position that you're better situated to respond to the market needs um, as compared to the typical real estate agent that's my lesson for the day no i love it because a lot of times we just we're we don't want to get out well first of all we just don't like change that's that's the number one thing i mean how many of you would agree with it that you throw change into the mix I mean, school transition is one of the biggest changes that people have in their routine. They get up at a different time. The parents have to get up earlier. Like, it's not like, I mean, those first couple of days of change drive people insane. But if I was to say it to you now, people would be like, well, we're back in our routine now. Okay. It's that, that, that transition period that people don't like, but they don't know. You know, they don't know what they don't know, especially up in the Northeast, where I'm from the Northeast, so I can say this. I'm from New York. It's in, in my hometown in upstate New York. When I go up there, they think I have like five heads when I tell them the real estate business on how we don't have to wait 90 days to close a property. I'm like, we really can close this in 35 days. And they thought I was the greatest, craziest person in the world. But I had to be relentless to conversations. And Dennis up in New York, he was just like, I mean, even he's like, Brock, I don't think they, they like you. I'm like, I know they don't like me, but most people don't like people who change <laughs> because that's that's part of it everybody likes to stay in their little like like circle so help people change because eventually they will be okay if i can help you by giving you investment property to help your kids especially if you have younger kids or maybe you're thinking about i want to retire in 15 years we'll start building a 15-year portfolio guys there's 15-year arms and look at that to see what you can do and find people that can help you. There's lenders out there that can put things in there. And if I can help you, would you be interested in hearing a little bit more about it? Now, you've already done a transaction with these people. So I got to believe they're going to be like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I trust you. I've already worked with you. I mean, think about that. 
what is that? You're absolutely right, D, as I look at it. It is due to the attorneys and the attorneys hated me because I was relentless to them and I bothered the hell out of them every single week. And boy, they did not like me, but guess what? We still closed and people like we closed faster than they ever did. And they're like, because they probably wanted to get rid of me. But my point of it is like, well, I got my client in their house and they got in there sooner and they're like, Brock, this is amazing. I didn't think we could do it. That's my, that's my fiduciary responsibilities as my client. I mean, hell, you're going to piss people off no matter what you try to do in life. But um, anyways, that was my learning lesson up in New York, side note. But here's the thing, guys. Take advantage of opportunities. Think outside the box. Mike Taylor, I thought that was a really good conversation topic that just these are things you can have with your past clients. Talk to them about it. Agree or disagree, all. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. I give you a thumbs up. 100% agree. Taylor's giving yeah. you a th- All right. Glenn's giving us a thumbs up too. Got Claudia. A lot of thumbs up in Facebook world. Guys, I'm just telling you, there's opportunities to have conversations with people, but you don't know if you don't know. I mean, hell, I mean, I could go into somebody else's job today and they would be like, um, I don't, I, I don't know how to do this. And they're like, oh, really? Come on over here. Let me show you. Well, of course, because you've been doing this for a long period of time. I just came into that industry. So I would have no idea. Amy's got a question. Amy, go ahead. Or she, did, or she might've been giving me the thumbs up and accidentally hand, had her hand raised. So that could have been her thing too. Amy, do you have a question or did you just hit the wrong button? I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good though. You're good. I, I saw your <laughs> hand go up though. So, <laughs> um, so one of the questions, Sydney, thank you so much, Sydney. I appreciate that. Yeah. Lori, <laughs> Lori's my transaction coordinator. And she's like, yeah, they did not like you, Brock. I know it, it happens. Um, who are you calling these days? So people I'm calling, I always call FISBOs. FISBOs are my number one people over anybody else right now. I call FISBOs and then I do withdrawals. And then I go to my sphere of influence um, is where most of um, my order of how I calls today will be one of the questions was, where's the bulk of my business come from? Honestly, I'm still a bulk of my business is from for sale by owners. Um, This month, at the end of this month, I'll probably just to share with you, like my gross commission just for for sale by owners this month will be about 63,000. Um, but I'm, I'm relentless with for sale by owners. I really like them because they put up a sign, they put up posts, they do everything they can waving me saying, Hey, I need help. That's my mindset for for sale by owners. The market is shifting. So I found a lot of strategies and conversations to tell them like, aren't you nervous about this? Doesn't it make you a little scared? How about this? Like the rates are going up. Like, I don't know about you, but like, how many times have you done this on your own before? Like, those are the questions I ask them to make them feel like, damn, you're right. I need some help. So that's how I how I create. Yes, they're waving their hands. So I do like for sale by owners. That's that's where I get a lot of it. Um, bonus lately, I've gotten buyers from my past clients, um, and so those are the conversations. But it's not about verbos. I'm going to start to do that. A lot of my conversations are just checking in with them, seeing how they're doing, um, and that is that is just kind of like refresh their mind in the real estate industry for me. So that's that's where. A lot of my business is coming from. So great questions on that, D. Anybody else have anything they want to add or say to say to us here as we close out? Hopefully you found this as valuable and you got some information. Give guys, just call five people. That's it. I mean, literally, if I showed you my my to-do list over here, like my to-do list because I was out of town, it's like crazy busy today. But some of the things I have on here are just call five people. Right to no cards. I make it simple because it's the beginning of the week and I don't want to overwhelm myself. So I just make my, my task simple to build a w- winning mindset inside my head. Because I, if I put in 10, my chances of getting it done are just not going to be the same. Um, Brock, will you do a FISBO listing call with us sometime soon? What is the detailed script? Yeah, I certainly can. Uh, why don't we just do it on Tuesday? Uh, I have my live call set up on Tuesday anyways. So I will be actually here in town. I will be available. So I could do my live for sale by owner script calls um, on Tuesday at 1030. 
Uh, so that way you guys can hear it. And then if you have more questions, I can also tell you, take you through my five, my five touches. Um, Greg did a podcast with me. We're going to get ready to do a second part uh, next week. He's got us lined up, but I just did one. If you take a look at his, I'm sure he'll put it in the, in the chat, but if you go to Brock Zeman's mindset motivation too, you will see my listing, um, and my listing presentation is the same for Fizbo's, Expired's, Friends. I'll tell you this, and, and, and I'll end on this note because I'm over. My listing presentation is better when I have family and friends than anything else because I feel that my family and friends choose me because they're obligated, not because they want to. So I give them the dog and pony. I pull out all the bells and whistles. They even say like, Brock, I mean, you got the listing. You don't have to do all this stuff. No, I need to do all this stuff because you are my greatest advertisement for me because not only am I family to you, like, well, he's really good too, guys. Like I don't choose him because of family. Like he's really good. You should see all the stuff he gives me. He had this, I could show it to you. I even have it in my phone. See, now they become a walking advertisement for me. But if I freaking let the ball, well, I got this. This one's in the bag. I don't need to give them anything. Then they don't have anything to say. Well, like, hey, you can use Brock. He's my nephew. Oh, and a smart person's going to be like, well, that's why I use him because he's family. But no, <laughs> that thing can really emphasize about you. So a couple side items. Guys, I hope you got some good value out of this Facebook world. Thank you for being part of us. Remember, guys, this is what we do. We're all about coaching. We're about helping people. We're about networking. If this is your first time being on here, make sure you put your information on the chat and in the post. If you like it, I do get excited over hearts and loves and, and thumbs up. It gets me motivated. It gets me excited to be able to do this. Literally, I do this every day, five days a week, over four and a half years. So stuff like this motivates me. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up, share it with somebody else out there. Facebook world, please do that as well. Write comments in there because other people watch it in the recording. So I will be here tomorrow. I'll be leading tomorrow in um, Facebook world. We're going to be signing out. Remember, if you always want to hear what we have going on after, you can join us in Zoom world. Uh, Zoom, we're going to dive into our day today. Facebook, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow.